This video explains how to draw a histogram and a density for each column of a data frame in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you several examples and all of these examples are based on the data frame that we can create with lines two to six of the code. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the top right of our studio that a new data frame is appearing, which is called data and we can print the first six rows of this data frame using the head function, as you can see in line seven of the code. And then you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that our data frame contains four columns, x1, x2, x3, and x4. And all of these columns contain random numeric values. Now, in this tutorial, we are going to draw our data using the ggplot2 package. And for that reason, we also need to install and load the ggplot2 package, as you can see in lines nine and 10 of the code. I have installed the package already. So for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line 10 of the code. And after running this line of code, we are able to use the functions of the ggplot2 package. Now, in order to draw our data, we also need to change the structure of our data. And for that reason, we also need to install and load this package, as you can see in lines 12 and 13. I have installed the tidy R package as well. So for that reason, I'm just going to load this package, as you can see in line 13 of the code. In the next step, I'm going to use the pivot longer call names and S data frame functions to change our data frame structure from the wide format to long format. So after running these lines of code, you can see that a new data frame is appearing at the top right, which is called data long. And we can once again print the first six rows of this new data frame using the head function, as you can see in line 18 of the code. And then you can see that we have created a new data frame, which contains our data in long format. So the first column is called name and contains the column names of our input data frame. And the second column is called value and contains the values of each column. Now in the next step, we can draw our data in a histogram, as you can see in lines 20 to 22 of the code. So in these lines of code, I'm using the ggplot function to specify our data frame and the aesthetics of our plot. Then I'm using the geom histogram function to specify that I want to draw a histogram. And then I'm using the facet wrap function to specify that I want to draw a histogram for each of our columns in a facet plot. So if you run lines 20 to 22 of the code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new plot object is appearing, which is called ggp1. And we can draw this plot to the bottom right of RStudio by running line 23 of the code. And then you can see at the bottom right that we have created a grid of four different histograms. And each of these panels shows one of the columns of our input data frame in a separate histogram. So the panel at the upper left shows our column X1, the second panel shows the column X2 and so on. Now, alternatively to that, we can also draw density plots of the columns in our data frame, as you can see in the next example in lines 25 to 27 of the code. So the only difference here is that I'm using the geom density function instead of the geom histogram function. So if you run lines 25 to 27 of the code, you can see that another plot object is appearing at the top right, which is called ggp2. And we can draw this plot to the bottom right by running line 28. And then you can see that we have created a new grid of density plots. And these densities correspond to the different columns in our data set. We can also combine densities and histograms in the next step of this tutorial, as you can see in lines 30 to 33 of the code. So in this case, I'm specifying the geom histogram function. And within the geom histogram function, I'm specifying that the histograms in our grid of histograms should correspond to the density values on the y axis. And then I'm also using the geom density function as in the previous example. And in this case, I'm specifying that I want to show the densities in a different color. And I also want to increase the size of the densities. And then once again, I'm using the facet wrap function to specify that I want to draw each column in a separate 
plot panel. So if you run lines 30 to 33 of the code, another plot object is appearing at the top right, which is called ggp3. And we can draw this plot to the bottom right by running line 34 of the code. And then you can see that we have created another grid of plots. And each of these panels shows a histogram and an overlaid density for one of the columns in our input data frame. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next video.